Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from Our Space. Attention, attention. Today on Our Space, we have some confessions to make. Ears at the ready. Sometimes you know when someone is right for you. And sometimes you know when someone is all sorts of wrong. Our first OP is sick of the threats. My, 28 male, wife, 32 female, keeps throwing divorce in my face over everything. I just agreed and left. I'm currently staying with my sister. My wife and I have been together for five years, married for four. We had known each other for years prior. We have one kid together who is four. I am the primary breadwinner in the house as she is a stay-at-home mom. It was her choice not to go back to work. For the last year and a half, we have been having arguments about one to two times a month. To be clear, I do help out with our daughter. I clean, cook, and am involved with both of them. The first time she said she wanted a divorce was when we got into an argument when my sister called and asked if she could stay with us for a bit as she was having relationship problems. Ironic. I said she could. My wife was not happy about that. I pointed out that her friend stayed with us a couple of months prior for five weeks and didn't do anything around the house. Plus, she was just there. No discussion, no nothing. She was a stranger to me and my daughter. My sister is lovely and has a great relationship with our daughter, and I thought my wife was as well. She ended up staying with us for a week helping out around the house, cooking, cleaning, and watching our daughter when needed. I thought we both forgave each other and moved on. The fights are usually over something small, 90% are not started by me. I have suggested therapy and counseling, but she always said we, she, never needed it. Well, I had it last night. She picked a fight saying I was spending too much time at work and that she feels abandoned and that I'm not a good father ended her rant with I want a divorce. I stood up and told her that the only reason I work so much is because she can't stop spending my, edit, at the time of the argument, I used our money, typing it out, it came out as my money on accident. We agreed to split the money into bills, future savings, future daughter, and fun money, money, on things we don't need or use. She refused to get a job or go to school to help her out. I provided for the family, for my daughter. I'm always at her important dates, functions, doctor's appointments, anything she needs. She refused to get help through therapy or counseling. I don't want this anymore. I'll have my lawyer send her the papers when she writes it up. I got my daughter's things and left with her to my sister's. It has been two days and she keeps calling and texting saying she is sorry. She didn't mean it. She wants to go to counseling and therapy. She needs me. She misses me, etc. I don't know what to do. I love her. She's a good mother, but I can't do this anymore. Internet strangers, please help. Yes, I have a lawyer for my family and work. I have known her since I was a teen. Let's see what kind of advice the community offers. First up, this is still only a snippet of your life. You still know your wife and life better than we do. Make the best decision for your daughter. That's all you can do. Toxic parents are the effing worst, especially when they can't get over their BS for their kids' sake. You got this, King. Always put your daughter first. Next up, I had the exact same situation. After the 500th time of her saying we should get a divorce, I finally agreed. Of course, her version of the story later was that I left her, but even that wasn't worth arguing over. My best advice is that even after divorce, you will need to work things out with her on things regarding your daughter. So don't do anything mean or spiteful during the process. Wait a while to see other people after you move out, or she will assume you are cheating on her with any new person. You can't make other people happy. She needs to be reasonable for her own happiness. Don't be angry. Just say, I love you and I want you to be happy. But it's clear I can't do that. So you're right that we're better off getting a divorce. And then don't waver on that decision. The OP responds, There's been a lot going on since I first posted, but I wanted to point out some things that it seems was missed or looked over. I would do everything again if I had to, including taking my daughter. I have pushed her to go out, find a job, get a hobby, meet new friends, and do something, anything. I reached out to people to help out asked about seeing someone for help. She would not listen or consider anything I have presented. She kept saying no, or she was not the problem. My daughter is my priority. I don't fight with my wife in front of her or around her. I grew up in a bad household. I have been in the position where my dad got angry at my mom. My mom left and my dad took it out on me. I don't ever want that for her. I don't know what my wife was going to do that night. You can't force someone to get help. They have to want it, actually want it. If you force someone, they will go through the motions just to make it look like they changed. I'm not blameless in this, but I can't raise my daughter with her thinking this is okay behavior. 
or this is how relationships are supposed to be like. I decided when I was young that I would never be like my dad. I think there's a lot of truth here, OP. You can't make other people happy, and you certainly aren't responsible for their happiness. And I think you can handle only so much of someone saying they don't want to be with you and really holding that over your head for so long. That's not a game anyone wants to play. And I understand not wanting to continue that cycle with your daughter. The comments are right. Whatever decision you make, make it in the best interest of your daughter. Update. Hello all. Unfortunately, this is not a sunshine and rainbows update. Okay, so after I made my post, I had a bunch to think about. I decided that I had to make sure she knew how serious I was. We sat down, and I flat out told her that I couldn't do this anymore. The fighting and the threatening of divorce has to stop. She agreed and said she would not say it. I told her that the next time it was thrown out, it would be the last time. We agreed to go to couples therapy. It was eye-opening. Things were said, feelings were brought up, and outside professional views helped us understand the other better. After a few sessions, I thought we were doing better. She started to apply herself more. She looked and obtained a job, made some friends and got a hobby. This was until an argument started because we had plans in regards to our daughter that she overlooked and couldn't cancel the other plans she had made with some new coworkers. At what I considered the end of the argument, she said under her breath, I knew marrying you was a mistake. I looked at her and the thing I remember most is how I did not recognize the woman that was standing there. She looked different to my eyes. I didn't know who the woman was in front of me was. I asked her to repeat herself. She said, I should have divorced you years ago. I walked away and took my daughter to the plans alone, just us two. I ended up filing for legal separation. Under the terms we both signed was something along the lines of, while separated, we are still legally married and will not get involved with anyone during this time period. Finances will be separated, but bills will stay as currently split. I would still pay for insurance through work. Other things that were in it were therapy sessions would continue both as individuals and couples. I would move in with my sister and we had shared custody of our daughter. 70 me, 30 her. One day, when I had my daughter, I needed my wife to take her. I let her know a week before and she agreed. The morning of at 7.30, I went to drop her off at the house and noticed an unfamiliar car in the driveway. My first thought was, she must have a friend girlfriend over. I go ring the doorbell, out of respect but still odd ringing your own doorbell, and wait with my daughter when a shirtless man about 20 opens the door and asks who I am and what do I want. I ask for my wife. He calls her and she comes around the corner in a robe and her face goes from curious, shocked, horrified, sad. Needless to say, in three months time when the legal separation ends, I'm filing for a decree of dissolution of marriage. My daughter is safe. She doesn't understand what's going on other than daddy and mommy are not happy with each other. As stated above, she is my priority. I guess I did do the one thing I never wanted to do, the one thing I promised myself I would never become, but I guess it couldn't be helped. I ended up just like my parents. I don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. I hope I can just show how much love I have for my daughter and raise her the best I can. Thanks for the support, comments, love, and criticism. Let's see how the community reacts. First up, that's effing hard. One day your daughter will know what her dad did to protect her. I hope you find peace in your life, OP. The next commenter says, I'm so sorry, OP. You really did the best you could with what you were given. Don't beat yourself up too hard. ETA, I can tell you from experience that having separated parents is better than having parents that are together, but obviously unhappy. Next thought, from what you wrote, I don't think you are like your dad. You didn't do the same thing your parents did. You prioritized your daughter and took her from a household that was no longer healthy for her. I'd say that it's not the matter of knowing how a relationship should look like, but the fact we cannot always force how the people we love will change over time. We also never get to know someone as thoroughly as we think, only the bits they show us. I think you've made the best choice in this situation. The OP replies, I feel like I never knew her. I only know the side of her that she showed me. I just hope I'm doing right by my daughter. Thanks. The comments are right. You did the best you could with the cards you were handed, OP. You can't be the only one working to keep a marriage together. It takes two people. And I think you're far from different from your parents. You know your self-worth, and you'd never put your child in a negative situation. You're looking out for her, which is far more than your parents could ever say. What do you think? Could OP have done anything differently? Next up, OP can't wake up from this nightmare. 
Pandemic locked me in the house with my cheating wife. Full story. I've pondered a lot the idea of me posting this story, and based on the title, I'm sure you realize this story is now closing in on three years old. However, I felt at this point that it is good to get this off my chest. At the time, I, 30 male at the time, was happily married to my 30 female wife. We had been married around six years. I will refer to her from here on as Sarah, not her real name. We traveled, ate together, and spent time together basically every night for the first six years of the marriage. During 2019, I started to see some warning signs that, in retrospect, should have told me something was up. In early 2019, I had to be out of town for a work conference, the first time that I had ever been gone overnight from home without her. She immediately suggested that her friend might come visit and even stay over those days. Now for context, this friend, 29 male, I will refer to him as Mark, is someone she texted all the time. They were close friends, and I know for a fact had been intimate with before we met. I put my foot down and said no, pointing out he never came over in six years, except the one time I was gone. While she got mad, she respected my wishes to the best of my knowledge and the scenes from the security cameras. There were other things as well that gave me pause, but for the interest of time, I will move on. Now we arrive at the end of 2019. As we were in a movie theater together, I noticed her writing messages to someone on her Apple Watch during the movie. This was very unusual for her to do, and the messages, although I can't remember them, were a bit strong for a coworker at a new job, but nothing overly sexual or romantic. I ask her about it after the movie, and she brushes it off. Her behavior changes, sitting away from me on the couch, changing in a different room, and so on. I start to wonder, am I being cheated on, or what is being hidden from me? I feel tremendous guilt for even thinking about checking her phone for confirmation, feeling that if I do, and I am wrong, there's no point in continuing to be married. After thinking about it for days, I decide to check in January 2020, Now, her phone is always close by, and I don't know the passcode. Luckily, her watch is accessible, and she made the code our anniversary. Irony abound. What I discover next is horrifying. Sarah and Mark discussing her hookups with a coworker, then mocking me for not noticing what is going on. Sarah discussing how the ideas of me touching her is revolting, how she can't imagine having kids with me. We had been trying in mid-2019, so this especially hurt. Then I read the messages between Sarah and the coworker, We will call him Carl. Those messages are explicit, and Sarah shows more affection for him in every way that she shows me now. And each message tells me a new revelation that hurts more. That a trip she had was to console a friend was really so that the friend could meet Carl. That she began changing in the bathroom so I wouldn't see the hickeys on her body. That her therapist knows all of this and says I should be made aware, but that she should be happy with whoever. I stay up till 3 or 4 a.m., reading these messages and taking pictures of everything. I don't sleep that night. My jaw clenched so hard all night it caused issues for months. She leaves for work. I'm off that day. And my first phone call is to a lawyer. What are my options? When I confront her, what can I say? Not say, legally. I wait for her to come home, reading over the messages to confirm it wasn't the worst dream I ever had. When I confront her, I tell her what I know without revealing I had been in her texts. I tell her I spotted the hickey a lie, but she mentioned it in the messages, that I know she's texting someone. Sarah lies, tries to argue that it is someone else that gave her the hickey, but finally I read a message from her watch. I guess what I expected was for her to break down and admit everything. Instead, Sarah explodes in rage that I violated her privacy. The insanity and gaslighting of trying to convince me that I was the bad guy here blew me away. She stormed out of the house and disappeared for three days. No communication as to where she was, even though I asked her to tell me where she was staying so I knew she'd be safe. To this day, I only know a small part about where she went or what she did. When she comes back, she tells me she wants to try to fix things and spend some time together. It doesn't go well. I catch her sneaking off to meet with him once again as she foolishly leaves the watch behind and I can read the messages in real time. I finally tell her in February 2020 that I contacted a lawyer. She insists she won't sign anything until we attend a couple's counseling. I humor it. But it goes off the rails immediately when, after I explain we're here because she had an affair, that she argues my word choice. Affair was too strong a word? She also lies about the fact that she cheated on me before Carl with a married man, something I discovered at a later date going through her watch once again. She admits her plan was to find an apartment, then hand me papers without me ever knowing what was going on. She even tries to blame the whole affair on me, using, in the therapist's view, minor disagreements as proof of my cold and uncaring demeanor. One example, 
I don't immediately scream at my parents for a Christmas gift she didn't like, or at her parents when they playfully made fun of her. At this point, the decision is made. I need to divorce her, as she will never tell the truth. We agree Sarah will move out of our house, and I even help her find an apartment, anything to get her out of the house faster. One day in March 2020, I watched the news of COVID come in, and all construction work stops. Her apartment was almost ready, but was being renovated. Now, there's nowhere for her to go. I'm stuck in the house with her from March to June of 2020. For those wondering, she has enough legal knowledge to know that leaving would make her case harder and might still have to pay expenses. Those three or so months were hell. Trying to do my job and live in a house with a person who had wronged me and ridiculed me was unbearable at times. We tried, as best we could, to keep it civil and not scream at each other every time we passed each other. Imagine spending 90 plus days cooking meals, passing by, and seeing no one else in the world but the person who ended your marriage and broke your heart. Every day featured me essentially locking myself in a room for eight hours, then doing yard work or working out to avoid speaking with her. She moved out for the most part in late June once the world started to open up a bit and had all of her items out by July. Knowing that I wanted the house, she definitely manipulated the situation to her advantage to avoid her being publicly shamed. Her family, to this day, doesn't know what caused the divorce. She didn't tell them the divorce was happening at all till after the papers were signed and essentially forced me to pretend we were still together until then, at which point I told her to tell her parents or I would. They never asked me what was the cause, although one of two did wish me well. I never felt the need to tell them, as despite the pain of gaslighting she caused, I didn't feel the need to hurt them. Her parents never wronged me. Carl and Sarah didn't last. When I found out, Carl told her to leave me and be with him, but she tried to mend our relationship and he walked away from her, so she ended up with no one. Sarah and I rarely speak now unless it's absolutely necessary, which is rare. I wondered at times if maybe I was wrong for not publicly outing her infidelity. The people who are important to me know the truth. I also never confronted or spoke to, for that matter, Carl or Mark or her friend, who knew about all of this but never warned me. As for me, I found someone who was truly a good person and have a great relationship. I've never told Sarah as it's none of her business, much like telling her family about her cheating. I thought about telling Sarah how well I'm doing, but I think that is just schadenfreude. Thanks for reading, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Ask for some thoughts, the community has them. First up, I applaud you for the way you handled it. I, on the other hand, am an a-hole. I would have told everyone why we divorced, every detail about what she did. I did that with my first wife. Glad you are finally truly happy. As for Sarah, I hope she has a miserable existence for the rest of her life. Sorry, not sorry. Next comment says, Dude, you got out and moved on with someone else getting in contact with your ex-wife to rub it in her face will give a few minutes of happiness, but staying no contact and blocking her will give a lifetime of happiness. She knows that you're happy and she regrets her actions, but she will never tell you that. She won't admit that she was wrong and you don't need that admission. Leave her alone. Karma will get her. P.S. Congratulations on your new relationship. Hope it's a nice lady. And if she's not, you know the drill and you can see the red flags. Good luck. Wow. I can't believe she tried to turn it around on you for discovering the hickeys and the messages on her watch. She was just upset at herself for getting caught and was projecting that onto you. I'm actually shocked you tried to make it work after all that. You sound like a very patient man. But you might have wasted your time there. Especially pretending the marriage still existed just to please her. You didn't have to do that, but I guess that gave you some good karma. Anyways, I'm glad you found someone else. Wishing you much happiness. What do you think? Would you have left earlier? Would you have played along and pretended you were still married? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on our space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.